Whether you're a new Mac user or an existing one, I've put together some changes, some settings, some adjustments that I would recommend you check out for your Mac to get it running in the most productive and efficient way possible. So there are a bunch of options that I always change with Finder because by default, I find Finder a bit too basic and I'm surprised some of these options are actually unticked by default. So one of the first ones is we're gonna go up to view and we're gonna show path bar. We're going to show status bar as well. And now we can see how many items are in a folder. I can see where I am along my sort of file path. I can see how many gigabytes available on my Mac. And the last one actually I also need to enable is to show the tab bar. So now I can create another tab quite easily within my Finder. Just makes it much easier to copy and paste items between different folders in Finder. I also always change what is shown in the sidebar. So we're going to go to Finder, Settings, and then in the sidebar here, we can change what is shown. A lot of these are actually unticked by default. Things like the root folder for my user profile, the actual MacBook itself so that I can get into the hard drive and stuff like that. Yeah, I've enabled and disabled whatever works for me. And you can of course reorganize them as well to however you like. I also disable recent tags because that's not a function that I ever use. I know some people do, but I found a lot of people don't actually ever use it. So I would recommend turning that off as well, just to save space on your sidebar. Another one I would recommend enabling is the file name extensions. I have it already ticked, but it's under the finder settings under the advanced tab. And yeah, you can just enable it, disable it. It takes a little while to sort of filter through all of your files, but this is so incredibly useful because in a folder, I might have a PSD, I might have a JPEG, a PNG and an SVG. There is no way to tell what those are until I actually click on them, which is quite frustrating. Having the file name extensions enabled, now I can quickly see what type of file it actually is. Another useful finder setting is customizing the toolbar. So you have this toolbar up here, you can right click and customize the toolbar. And then I always add the airdrop functionality. So I already had it there, but I can add it back in. Once I've done that, I can select a file and I can click on airdrop and it will instantly bring up the airdrop functionality for me to share that file to whatever device I have. This is so incredibly useful because now I don't have to right click and I have to find the airdrop section, whatever it is in the menu. It's just there always. Next up, we have Raycast and I've partnered with Raycast on this video. If you've seen my other videos in the past, you will have seen that I've mentioned Raycast before. I've been a long time user of Raycast, so it's great to have them be part of this video. So Raycast is a spotlight replacement. Well, it is for me anyway. So by default, when you press command space, you usually bring up spotlight, but I have it completely replaced with Raycast. Raycast is super, super powerful. It can do a lot of stuff that Spotlight can't do. So you can do the basic stuff like calculations, so 500 times by three. You can do currency conversions. So maybe I wanna do 500 pounds to USD. I can do that too. So that sort of stuff handles it, no problem. But you can do a bunch of other stuff. Window management is a big one. So I have a window here in front of me. Yeah, I can do some, something like uh, last two thirds, like so, I would bring it to last two thirds. I could do half or bottom half. I can do, uh, top half. So yeah, you can organize your windows however you like, basically, uh, for whatever window you currently have open. There's also a clipboard history built in, so I can bring up my clipboard like so. I can scroll through, go through my clipboard, really easy. You can have floating notes. This one I actually really, really like. So we can toggle the floating note. We can drag that to wherever we like on our screen and it will stay on top of any windows you have open. Maybe your desktop feels really cluttered. You have way too many apps open, way too many windows open. When you're on an app, maybe you just want to focus on one app, you can actually hide all of the other apps automatically. And we can type in hide all and it will hide all apps except frontmost. Done. Now all of your windows are hidden as well. Raycast has a feature called quick links, which is sort of like bookmarks. So yeah, we can go to our quick links. We can see what we have. I have a quick link for my store. I have a quick link for my YouTube studio. And what you can also do is if you have a team, you can share those quick links with everyone else in your team. Just makes it easy to share links across your whole team so they have access to all of the same things. And of course you can't have an app these days without AI built right in. So when we have Raycast open, we can just put in AI and we can see all sorts of commands here for chat GPT. So we can go to AI chat and we can now chat with AI in here. You can even record it to a hotkey and you can start chatting with chat GPT. Don't have to open the website up or anything. You can of course also copy and paste text into your clipboard and have that automatically changed. It's awesome. You know, if you're someone who uses chat GPT a lot, if you're someone who uses AI, 
to do all sorts of stuff. This is going to be incredibly useful. I think one of the key features of Raycast that's worth mentioning is the store. So with the store, you can basically add extensions to Raycast to make it even more powerful. So there are extensions for all sorts of things. There's Philips Hue, so you can actually control your lights directly in Raycast, which is pretty awesome, really. There's CleanShot X, which is one that I use a lot. I'm actually using it right now to record this screen. There are a bunch of different extensions here. And the aim is that you don't have to open up another app. You don't have to go to a different website or whatever. The aim is that you can do everything in here. You can also control system level settings in Raycast. So one that I like, I guess this isn't even sort of system related, but it sort of is, is Caffeinate. So with Caffeinate, I can keep my Mac open for a set number of minutes, hours, whatever I like. I can also do a bunch of other stuff here. Things like set the volume, toggle the appearance, empty trash, hide all apps like I mentioned earlier, lock the screen quit all applications, toggle Bluetooth. There are a bunch of different commands here. And that's what Raycast is really powerful at. You can do all this sort of stuff without actually having to go into your settings. So that's Raycast. I would highly recommend checking it out. It's free to download and try, and then you can upgrade it for pro features for some other sort of functionality. But yeah, make sure to check it out. Next up, we have Better Touch Tool. And what Better Touch Tool does is basically amplify your trackpad or your magic mouse. So I only really use it for one function, and that's the ability to open new tabs with just a gesture. So the Magic Mouse, for example, doesn't have the scroll wheel, so I can't click the scroll wheel to open a link in a new tab. So what I've done is I've just set it up as a two finger tap on top of the Magic Mouse. And I think on the trackpad, I also set it up as a three finger tap. So yeah, in Safari, you can see here for the Magic Mouse, I've chosen the Magic Mouse here, Two finger tap is command click. Command click opens links in a new tab. And yeah, there are a bunch of other sort of options here that you can adjust the touch bar, keyboard shortcuts, a normal mouse, even a Siri remote. Like yeah, there's so much stuff here. You can also have like MIDI triggers and stuff. And then when you actually wanna add more triggers, there is so much here. So yeah, Better Touch Tool is a fantastic way just to add different gestures to your Magic Mouse or your trackpad. Next up, we have a utility called a Mac Media Forder. So yeah, it looks a bit intimidating when you look at it, but what it does is it basically adjusts the play pause button on the keyboard. So by default, the play pause button will play or pause whatever media you're watching or playing at the time. So when you're on YouTube, the play pause button will of course play and pause that video. However, I don't want it to do that. I want the play pause button to only play or pause my Spotify music. And this is exactly what it does. So it prioritizes what the play pause button does it makes sure that it only play and pauses your Spotify or your iTunes, Apple Music, whatever you're using. And then it doesn't adjust anything else. It doesn't change anything else. That's all it does. And for me, it's just an absolute godsend because when I'm playing music and then I open up a YouTube video, it's then playing the music and playing the YouTube video. But when I press play or pause, it's pausing the YouTube video, not the music. When I actually I want to watch the YouTube video. <laughs> so this is what this does. And yeah, it just sort of sits in a toolbar up here and you can prioritize different things. So yeah, it's just a little utility that I would highly recommend it if you wanna change the functionality of your play pause button. Something I always change is the hot corners functionality. So when you go into your system settings, you can search for hot corners like so. And then if it will like, oh, here we go, hot corner shortcuts, is this it? There we go. So I have hot corners disabled completely. Hot corners by default just has the bottom right. And when you move your mouse to the bottom right, it opens up a quick note. I don't really like that. I think it's quite annoying, but I know some people do. So I'd recommend going in here and adjusting the hot corners to whatever you like, because for some people they can be very useful. Always check your display settings. So in the system settings, you can go to displays down here and you can adjust the spacing on your display. So you can have larger text or you can have default or you can have more space. So I have it on default for this display because it renders it nicely, the text is sharp. But if you want more stuff on your screen, you want the text to be smaller, then I'd recommend going for more space. I would also recommend playing with this, adjusting this, whenever you connect up an external display, when you connect up an external display, depending on the size of the display, things can sometimes look a bit too big or things can sometimes look a bit too small. This will let you change all of that and then we'll actually save it for that monitor. So you don't have to go into here every time to adjust it. It should save it for each monitor. So yeah, definitely play with this, see what works for you. I usually leave it on default for my Mac, but then when I connect it to an external display, I sometimes maybe go for more space because sometimes things can look a bit too big. Adjusting your login items is also another one. So in the system settings, you can just search login and you can go to login items and then you can enable or disable which apps launch when you open up your Mac, when you boot your Mac up, when you reboot it or whatever. This is one that I would keep an eye on regularly as you install more apps on your Mac because you don't want to be booting your Mac and then having a hundred different apps open all at once. That'll just bog everything down. You want to start using it straight away. 
So I would recommend going in here and disabling, removing whatever you don't need to be booted up with your Mac. If you've upgraded to Mac OS Sonoma, is it Sonoma or Sonoma? Son I think it's Sonoma, <laughs> but yeah, if you've upgraded, because I've literally just upgraded, you can now have widgets on your desktop, which is awesome because the widgets aren't actually limited to what you've installed on your Mac. If you have your iPhone nearby, it will show up the widgets that are on your iPhone on your MacBook, which I think is absolutely wild. So you can see here that I actually have my car, my Tesla. I can see the battery percentage. I can see if it's locked. I can see the temperature in the car and I can make sure that sentry mode is enabled all from my MacBook screen. Like this is awesome. I don't know why this didn't exist before. This makes so much sense. I have different clocks for different locations around the world. I have battery levels for my different devices. To adjust your widgets, you can just right click and then you can edit widgets and it will show you a screen on the bottom and then you can add whatever widgets you like. And you can see I have so many widgets here and these apps aren't apps that I have installed on my Mac. These are apps I have installed on my phone. And then I can drag and drop these widgets onto my desktop and it will automatically sync the data between the two. I would highly recommend updating to Mac OS Sonoma for this feature alone. So that's pretty much it. Those are some of the settings and adjustments that I always make whenever I set up a Mac. I also like to sometimes set up a Mac from fresh because it's just nice being able to start completely from fresh. If you have any suggestions, if you have any other settings that you would recommend changing, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always interested to hear what other people change on their Mac to make it more productive and efficient for them. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.